people, particularly in the in the workforce development world, um, believe, and rightfully so, that it's, it's quite easy to start a small business. Um, it turns out it's extremely hard to keep it running and and running profitably. So there's just a it, in the small business general uh, economy, you hear different statistics, but generally four out of five fail within the first five years. So um, if you have a, a public backing or philanthropic backing, you know, th there's an expectation that, you know, it shouldn't be too hard to run, a, create a business and we'll just make it a cooperative and everything will be, it'll be a better business because it's a cooperative. And that's just not, there's just too much instability, there's too much risk to really have that as a, as a strategy of trying to, if you're, if you're, challenge is to improve the quality of jobs for low-income people at some degree of scale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to happen business by business by business by business. So, um, so I think that there's been a recognition in the, in the, in the community development world, uh, cooperative development world, that, uh, that, that worker ownership is an incredibly important um, strategy uh, where you can, if you can establish and establish a business that is stable and strong, then the worker ownership can really reinforce all that you're trying to do because you're organized around the employee. There's a number of different practices that you can undertake, um, whether it's improving the quality of supervision that really is attended to how you supervise well a low-wage workforce. You can have a peer mentor programs. You can link. Uh, you can have a program within the company for emergency loans. You can have a, a capacity within the organization to link people to public benefits and particularly to uh, earn income tax credit benefits. You know, there's a l number of different things that an, an employer can do to help take an unstable job and make it a stable job. And the worker ownership structure reinforces that. Um, so if you if you're have all the other elements of a successful business, mm -hmm. then you can make an even better business from the perspective of the employee. It's the fact that it's just not so easy to create a business to begin with, or to keep it, to keep it running. Um, and, in, and in our industry as well, uh, there's only so much y any business can do given the constraints of public funding and public policy. So we felt at, in the Bronx that we were doing a very good job, relatively to everybody else, in terms of creating um, a, a, a stable employment for, for an unstable community, but that we had to, but we, we couldn't do any better with the current rules, so we had to change the rules of the game. And therefore, that's where we chose very specifically to stop trying to replicate cooperative businesses, take what we've developed in Philadelphia and New York, deepen that, so now we're quite sizable as companies. But, but leverage that by investing in public policy change and advocacy change. So we've done a lot of work to, um, to uh, improve reimbursements, to improve training standards and public policy. Just uh, at the federal level, just three weeks ago, um, after a five-year struggle, um, we've been working daily with the Department, U.S. Department of Labor to change the fact that, you may not know this, but home care workers in the United States are not protected by minimum wage and overtime protection. They're carved out as an exception, as, as what they call the babysitter exemption, as if these jobs were only uh, to require the skills of a babysitter. So we worked very hard to change the Department of Labor's regulations of Fair Labor Standards Act to, to include home care workers. And finally, Just uh, after a five-year struggle, uh, the Department of Labor announced the final rule change three weeks ago, and that impacts two million. And I hasten to add, we're not, you know, <laughs> PHI was very much in the lead of that, but uh, very many other organizations, National Employment Law Project, SEIU <laughs> Union, many, many other folks were in this battle together. But um, you don't get too many national victories of late, and so <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. And, and, that it. and that impacts two million workers. And, and I think that what, what the story of that is, although it's a, it's a many year story, um, is that uh, by being inside the industry, by being an actor inside the industry, we have enormous knowledge, enormous credibility, uh, relationships that allowed us to become an actor within the, within the sector and within the industry. So that's the type of leverage that is absolutely, I think, necessary if this is a strategy that's supported by public and philanthropic dollars, that's uh, enterprise development alone um, is insufficient given what we know to be the scale of the problem.